Welcome and thank you for watching the Why Can't I Sleep Workshop Part 1. My name is Jill and I am a Behavior Health Consultant here to facilitate this workshop, which is provided to you by the Edmonton Zone Primary Care Networks. As part of the medical home concept of care through a family physician in the interdisciplinary services provided through Edmonton Primary Care Networks, welcome to this workshop. Let's get started. Welcome to your medical home. When you walk through our door, we get to the heart of all your healthcare needs. Your family physician is the key to your medical home and knows you best. As a member of a primary care network in Alberta, your family physician can access a dedicated team of health professionals who together can provide you with the care you need through every stage of your life. Your medical home is where you can get reliable care you can trust at any time of the day, including accessing after-hours care without having to visit the emergency department. Your medical home is also where registered nurses, pharmacists, mental health professionals, dietitians, and other health professionals work with you to keep you living your healthiest life. By managing chronic disease and offering continuous care through your family physician, with links to specialists, hospital procedures, and treatments. Providing earlier detection of disease and improving access to the care you need when you need it. So welcome home. We're glad you joined us. Sleep is an important part of our lives, as we spend about a third of our lives sleeping. This video series will discuss the health benefits of quality sleep, ideas on how to improve, and techniques to prepare. In this first video, we will discuss what sleep is and why it's important. Video 2 gets into the top 10 behavioral techniques to improve sleep, and video 3 discusses sleep and our thinking as well as relaxation. Insomnia is a common sleep disorder where people can have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or waking up too early and not being able to get back to sleep. Some people have one of these and others might have all. Non-restorative sleep is also included under the umbrella of insomnia. And this is the subjective experience that sleep is not refreshing or restorative, even if getting an adequate amount of consistent sleep. Sleep is something that many Canadians struggle with. 15% of us get less than 6.5 hours of sleep each night, and sleep tends to be one of those things that we cut back on when time gets short. Have an assignment or a deadline due? Favorite show is on? Reading a great book? Staying up chatting with friends or family? It's easy to cut back on sleep to meet some of these other needs. The problem comes with how we feel the next day. Sleep deprivation can have the same effect on someone as being intoxicated. There are many risk factors for insomnia. The most common causes of insomnia are related to depression, anxiety, and stress. They are often things that go hand in hand. Sleep deprivation affects our mental and psychological state, and those with mental health disorders are more likely to have troubles with insomnia. Chronic sleep problems affect 50 to 80% of patients in a mental health setting, compared to with 10 to 18% of adults in the general US population. Stressors like deadlines, exams, marital conflict, and job crises may prevent us from falling asleep or wake us from sleep throughout the night. It's hard to calm the mind and the body when a lot is going on in our lives. People who work non-traditional hours such as split shifts, graveyard shifts, early morning shifts, or rotating shifts are at a greater risk for insomnia. Night is the body's most natural time to heal and regenerate. Even if you may get the same amount of sleep, the quality might not be the same. Our sleep patterns change throughout our lives and after the age of 40, sleep can be more disrupted with middle of the night awakenings than in our younger years. These awakenings not only affect the quality of our sleep, but they also interact with other conditions that may cause us to wake up, such as pain or needing to go to the washroom. We will discuss this more a little later in the presentation. Medical conditions like chronic pain, cancer, 
fibromyalgia, migraines, cardiac issues, circulatory diseases, respiratory problems, menopause. They can all cause issues with sleep in different ways. People with chronic pain are two thirds more likely to suffer from sleep disorders. Some of the medications to treat these conditions can impact sleep as well. Women are twice as likely to suffer from insomnia than men. Obstructive sleep apnea is defined as when the airway is repeatedly obstructed or restricted for 10 seconds or more while sleeping. It is characterized by snoring, snorting, gasping, or breathing pauses during sleep. People who have sleep apnea are more likely to have daytime sleepiness and fatigue despite getting an adequate amount of hours sleeping. They might wake in the morning with dry mouth or a headache. Sleep apnea can have serious and life-shortening consequences, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, depression, and other ailments. Obesity is the leading cause of sleep apnea as it contributes to the anatomical narrowing of the airway. Talk to your doctor if you're having some of these symptoms and request a sleep study to be done. There are several beneficial treatments for sleep apnea, such as a CPAP or a continuous positive airway pressure. Restless leg syndrome is a disorder of the nervous system where a person cannot resist the uncomfortable urge to move their legs while at rest. And this may result in difficulty falling asleep. The urge or unpleasant sensations begin or worsen during periods of rest or inactivity and are characterized by an unpleasant crawling, prickling, or tingling sensation in the legs and feet, which are relieved when the legs move. The feeling occurs in evening or nighttime hours typically. Women are two to three times more likely to have restless leg syndrome than men. Talk to your doctor if these symptoms feel familiar to you. They can be managed through a variety of techniques such as relaxation, hot or cold compresses to the legs, massaging, massaging the legs, and avoiding factors that are known to make these symptoms worse such as alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine. Sleep is important for many different reasons. It is needed for memory formation and when we don't get an adequate amount of sleep, our brain isn't able to store or interpret information in the same way. This can lead to difficulty with work or school, difficulty learning or interpersonal problems. Evidence shows that insomnia has been linked to weight gain, which can then lead to various health conditions such as heart disease and diabetes. It's important to note that insomnia does not directly cause these medical conditions, but rather poor sleep has a big impact on our behaviors. When we do not feel rested and refreshed, it is more difficult to be active and make healthy choices. So next, let's discuss what sleep actually looks like. This is the sleep cycle that we all experience every night. There are five stages of sleep. Stage one is the transitional stage or light sleep where we drift in and out of sleep and can be easily awoken. Our brain waves and muscle activity begin to slow. Sometimes people's bodies jerk just before they fall asleep called a hypnic jerk. Stage two is a light sleep stage where eye movement ceases, body temperatures start to drop, muscles begin to relax and brain and heart activity slow. Stage three and four are called delta sleep. These are the deep sleep stages, and this is when body restoration and repair occur. This is the most restorative part of the sleep cycle. Temperature drops e even further during this phase. Brain waves are slow, and there is a decreased muscle tone. People woken during delta sleep are often groggy and disoriented. Night terrors occur during the sleep stage. REM, rapid eye movement sleep, is where we do most of our dreaming and is believed to be a way of organizing the day's experiences. Muscles become temporarily paralyzed during REM. During REM sleep, all the information that you absorb during the day gets processed. Your brain forms neural connections that strengthen your memory and replenish mood-boosting neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. During sleep, we pass through the five stages within 70, 90 minutes. These stages begin in a cycle from stage one to REM sleep, then the cycle starts over again with stage one. The first sleep cycle each night contains relatively short REM periods and long periods of deep sleep. As the night progresses, REM sleep periods increase in length while deep sleep decreases. 
by morning, people spend nearly all their sleep time in stages one, two, and REM. In fact, the amount of time we spend in each sleep stage changes as we age. We typically will spend about 50% of our total sleep time in stage two sleep, about 20% in REM sleep, and the remaining 30% in the other sleep stages. When we look at this slide, we notice that as a baby, we start off spending a lot of time in REM and deep sleep. A baby is doing a lot of learning and processing and growing. As we age, the percentage of time spent in each stage changes. And by 60 years old, we spend more than half the night in medium to light sleep. Sleep starts to become more fragmented, waking to go to the washroom, from pain, mood disorders, or medication. This is important to keep in mind as we often compare our sleep to how it was when we were younger. We often hear people asking, how much sleep should I be getting? The reality is that there isn't a set amount of sleep that we need. Sleep needs differ from person to person, depending on their unique physiological requirements, so it's impossible to say an exact number. A general guideline for sleep would be between seven to nine hours, though some people might feel really rested with six and other people need nine to 10 to feel rested. The key is trying to get consistent sleep throughout the week as well as the weekends. As we have learned, older adults will spend more time in the lighter sleep stages, so they might need a brief nap in the day. Teenagers actually require 10 hours of sleep because they're still growing and learning so much. The real indicator for adequate sleep is how you feel the next day after the first hour of awakening. People talk about the afternoon slump, which is due to a number of factors. One of which is our circadian rhythm, which is basically a 24 hour internal clock that is running in the background of our brain and cycles between sleepiness and alertness at regular intervals. We often think of it helping us to wake up in the morning at certain times and get sleepy in the evening, but it can also cause a dip in energy in the afternoon from about 1 to 3 p.m. for many people. Follow up for our next video to help learn how to improve your sleep. Video two will go over the top 10 behavioral techniques and video three will discuss how to manage our unhelpful thinking about sleep and relaxation techniques. Thank you for attending the Why Can't I Sleep workshop. Your medical home is here to work with you to take care of your healthcare needs. Have a wonderful day.